strong is Shadow Garden and the Seven Shadows. Eminence in Shadow by Annie News. We're gonna react to it. Let's check it out. Shadow Garden to Sid is nothing more than a fantasy. A clever fabrication from back in his youth that That's up until right. now he still believes to be just roleplay. He made this shit up. Of course, we know everything to be very much real, but as one of the core gags that makes Eminence in Shadow what it is, Sid may never actually realize that. <laughs> and this is a thing that I don't think a lot of people understand is like, Sid truly doesn't understand that Shadow Garden is real. He thinks that everybody is just doing roleplay and they're just playing with this like, he, they're just playing along for Sid. But most people are caught up by like the hype moments that they kind of forget about this part, I guess. Seriously. As one of the most dense protagonists to have ever been isekai it's very possible Sid may continue his delusion forever. Yes, he'll never know. So, with that being a focal point of the anime, it's not often we get to see much about Shadow Garden. Sure, we get the occasional meeting and casual operation, but things like Hierarchy, the Seven Shadows, yes. and exactly how powerful they are, are more so mysteries left to the novels and mobile game. That the mobile game? Okay, this mobile game is so and fucking ass. Game. I played this last like Thanksgiving's weekend because I had nothing better to do. Bro, I downloaded this shit, wouldn't fucking open, crashes every time you put the hit the fucking quest. But the story is actually pretty decent, and it actually delves into... You know how, like... In like episode two of season one, right? Uh, or something like that. The Shadow Garden girls, when they're still kids, they tell Sin, we got to leave now. We're leaving you, Shadow. And then the mobile game, I think, delves into the story of that. So that was really cool. But the game fucking crashed over. And like, let me just play the fucking game. It's so ass. Game. That being the case, let's take a look at what Shadow Garden really is and see how strong the organization and its core members are. But first, this video is sponsored by... Raid Shadow Legends! Link in the description for Raid Shadow Legends! Andy News gotta get his dollar, I don't blame him. Hashtag ad. Dungeon Hunter 6. For free. But right. now, let's get back to the video. Shadow Garden's core purpose is to fight against the cult of Diablos. Yeah. They build influence and gather resources, bolster their ranks with girls afflicted by- That was last episode, right? And I mistakenly said Beta was Nanami or Nami. Demonic possession, then train them to become powerful warriors Oriana. capable of fighting against the cult. Oriana's it's power! It's a massive organization built upon a simple story shared between Shadow and Alpha. Alpha would then go on to recruit six more, and their investigation into the cult and the curse that had once plagued them would lead- like, why do they all just look like blobs in the beginning? It's because they were possessed, right? They're, they're possessed so that Shadow had to, like, somehow heal them. And then Alpha collects more girls that were also part of that, like, experiment or some shit. And they're possessed. And then it's just, like, we're just collecting a bunch of possessed girls and making them OP. The Seven Shadows on a mission far away from Sid. You see, but the possession now is interesting because the vampire genes, the progenitor vampire genes of Aurora and Diablos, they're kind of similar now too, right? In addition to finding out the cult was operating across the globe, there were several key findings that they'd made on demonic possession. They found that since the heroes who slayed Diablos were all women, it was exclusively women who would be the ones to suffer from possession. Yes, because... It's gotta collect the harm. I'm surprised we haven't had like a uh, a token femboy or trap yet in our in our harm, but all of them are just women for the sake of shadow collecting a harm. Then, because the curse was most common with elves and beastkin. Oh my god, beta those thighs. It was evident that those with longer lifespans were the most prone to possession, especially ah. the ones whose bloodlines were elves. closest to the heroes. So while humans could still become possessed. Since their lives were short and connection to the heroic bloodline weak, they of all species were the least. What the fuck was this last episode, bro? What the fuck was this one? <laughs> okay. They could have actually put her in a much more worse outfit. It's, it, you know, they got the PE bloomers here, but they could have put her in like the fucking middle school one piece uh, swimming suit, you know, with the name tag on that's blue. These degenerates, it's bro. To the curse. It's the reason why very few humans can be found within Shadow Garden at all. As for why Shadow Garden is only women, well, with female elves and theory- Well, why are they only women? Because we have a harem! ...anthropes being the most compatible subjects to possession, they were the only types of people safe- Oh yeah, how shadow. convenient. Only you women are uh, convenient. ...out of their way to locate others, since only those closest to possession were the ones worth doing experiments on. But why are they close to possession? You gotta ask yourself that, Animus. Why did the author make us such that only the girls? We're closer to possession. Hmm, I wonder why. Imagine if Skell and Poe were in possession. Actually, if Skell and Poe were under possession and they actually became a Shadow Garden member and they were actually cool, that would be sick now that I think about it. There's gotta be fan art like that, right? 
So, as the Seven Shadows scoured the globe, wiping out all of the cult's operations, numerous possessed would be saved and added These into children the children taken out. <laughs> they would be taught to fight the same way that Shadow had taught the original Shades, then bestowed yes. with the great Shadow wisdom that Sid had left with them. This being anything and everything from how to use magic infused slime, all the way to the stories and Epsilon. <laughs> Epsilon. <laughs> Best girl. Knowledge from his past life in Japan. By integrating this shadow wisdom into the very foundations of Shadow Garden. Delta never fucking pays attention in these meetings, right? Why even bring Delta into these exact meetings? She's just gonna be sleeping the entire time. The I miss on that Ozzy too. was able to expand its influence and become what it is today. Gamma fact, put a big if part to that. Times when Gamma and Beta would pick his brain, Beta wouldn't be the talented writer Natsume Kafka. Gamma wouldn't be the owner of the Mitsugoshi company. I think Gamma, in terms of contribution, Gamma is such an important person because she is like our entire fund. Without Beta, I'm sorry, without Gamma, none of these operations can happen because no money. But in the end, Epsilon wouldn't be the award when Epsilon just is a beautiful pianist. She's great. That's my favorite girl. Pianist Shiron. Each and every public persona the Seven Shadows used to influence the world have most in part been What's shaped Delta's by persona? Shadow Wisdom. Now, given the amount of wealth and influence gained by each of these public- Okay, I gotta say something. This soundtrack playing right now is so fucking epic. Does anyone know what the soundtrack is right now? Personas? There was no limit on the number of connections Shadow Garden now had in the world. Their network of information spread Scientist. widened, the amount of resources they had to maintain it were near limitless. Then, with their base of operations being in the old ancient city of Alexandria, what they'd managed to create was a secret global organization that not even the Cult of Diablos could track. As for why this ancient city was so special, well, aside from Sid calling it the Land of the Shadows for them to rise up in, what it actually was was a city of ruins home to the ancient Mist Dragon. What? A magical creature thought to be the strongest in existence. Wait, what? With the Mist Dragon? Like that guarding the surrounding area, there was no way anyone would dare traverse a single foot towards it. The legend alone was enough to make- Oh, this is the mobile game. This is straight up the mobile game. You can immediately tell, but I guess the mobile game- So Sid as a kid destroyed. <laughs> The dragon. <laughs> Any and all too afraid to. Making this the perfect base for Shadow Garden to operate. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, with a hidden base, global influence, and 666 members. Six and 666 members. Oriana's the last member? I mean, she is the most recent recruit. That makes a lot of sense, but it's like, we stop there? That's kind of really cool if Oriana's like 666 or Roku Roku Roku, and she's like the last member that made it in. The only thing that's cool. to make Shadow Garden the global superpower it is, is a military might comparable to any- Alright, I, I see the Delta hype, I see the Delta hype, I see the Delta hype, yes, I see this area right here. Mm -hmm. The other nations. I mean, Sid alone is definitely more than enough, but what about when it comes to the other members? How strong is Shadow Garden without, well, Shadow? Mm. Alpha is probably number one. Is led by Shadow himself, but since his involvement is minimal to none, the true strength of Shadow Garden lies with Alpha. Yep. She's the second in command who oversees all operations the leader. and activities. Main girl. Below her are the seven shades that. I want to believe that Epsilon is below, but it's probably like in terms of pure combat. If we're gonna do power scaling, is if we're saying how strong, and if we define strong as pure destructive force, probably Delta, right? It's gonna be Alpha, Delta. That serve as Shadow's special bodyguards, then below them are their respective units of named numbers and regular numbers. Mm. That's the core format of Shadow Garden's membership. To specify more on each though, let's start with what's common between all four of these groups. So there's name numbers and regular numbers. What is the difference between... I guess they actually have numbers, right? Like, Oriana right now is a regular number, or we call her Roku Roku Roku, but the name numbers are gonna be like Nami, right? Last episode, there was Nami that showed up, or Nanami. Groups. From Alpha and the Seven to the named and regular numbers, each and every one of them were cured from demonic possession, a unique feat that grants them magical power beyond that which is considered normal. Since the possession is essentially just an overload of mana, it's the process of being cured that grants- <laughs> What's going on here, bro? What is going on here, bro? Hey, yo, step bro, what are you doing, doing? Nami isn't one of the numbers. Name number is Nui, Lambda. Oh, okay, okay. Grants control over it. You see, what Sid and the others do when they cure these possessed is yeah, make what does he do? its body capable of handling such mana. Whereas the flow of mana would be blocked and accumulated, 
The result of being cured makes that mana flow freely, oh. allowing for full control over what would otherwise be an unnatural amount of magic. Instead of mana overload, the body can now handle the mana. Combine this with skills in combat taught by Sid himself, and what you get are an army of magically gifted soldiers all fighting with intelligence rather than just brute force. All girls, because again, gotta have a harem. So, not only is their training superior in every way, but as the ones possessed, they're also innately more powerful too. Of course, the level of training depends on who it is that was giving it, so if you're a newer member being trained by Lambda, it's only natural your skills are going to be subpar compared to the Seven Shadows trained by Sid. Yep. I mean, they did after all spend three years studying directly under him. And they made a big point in the mobile game, the dialogue, I think it's just directly from the light novels or source material too, but Sid's simplistic source style, he, I, I think Alpha said that our master wants us to have our own distinct styles, but also have the foundation as his own style. I forget the exact logical reasoning, but basically Sid's like, Sid's template, his like perfected like fundamentals have been passed down to these girls. And these girls have that as the core and then they kind of develop on top of that to make it more customized. Learning everything they could about both magic and martial arts. So as- the And titty padding as we've seen just right now, right? Not much of not, well magic is the titty padding, right? Epsilon C saw here right now. This is a epic discussion of whether or not she can surpass, you know, genetics, nature, right? So. As the first seven original members, they, they left. stand at the peak in terms of both power and responsibility. This picture, dude, this is so cool. There's like other imagery too with Shadow and the Seven sh Seven. Uh, are they called the Shades? They're called the Shades, right? The Shadow and the Seven Shades. This is so cool. They had taken the wisdom Shadow bestowed upon them and used it to master their respective fields of combat, science, espionage, and economics. Then, as the select few actually cured via Shadow's magic, it makes sense that Delta. their power far exceed every other member. Delta going Bankai fact, on Baldi. When Rose had seen just how powerful someone like Alpha was, she mm. was certain no government would be capable of handling her right now. It's true. If any nation it's true. wanted to subdue just one of these seven shadows, apparently an inordinate amount of military resources would be required to do so. Even one single shade, we're comparing Alpha right now as to an entire government entity, like... Like, what the fuck are these Black Knights are gonna do to Alpha? Fucking nothing. Iris couldn't do shit. So, so, even if it was just the Seven Shadows waging war on an entire country, the amount of damage they could do would be catastrophic. This is insane. I can understand no nipple here. What is going on here, though? This isn't- Are you telling me her nipple is on the side like this? That is demented. That is cursed. This is actually more cursed than the possession itself. What is going on here? How can a titty have a nipple protruding from the side like this? Ain't no fucking way! Like, individually, they're stronger than the strongest knights in every country, so you can only imagine how much more powerful they'd be together. Now, as for how they rank individually, mm. while all of them do have their own different strengths and skills, the order they're in is simply the order in which they joined Shadow Garden. Also, isn't this like... I no 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 it's different. I was gonna say like these this is like um Greek or some kind of you know in like high school physics class you know you get a bunch of coefficients that's like based on specific terminology like this is delta this is fucking pi psi blah 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 whatever right so I thought it'd be like the order alphabetically but yeah so alpha beta wait what did he say here individually while all of them do have their own different okay. strengths and skills. The order they're in is simply the order in which they joined Shadow Garden. No, that's just the order of joining Shadow Garden. If you're curious as to who the strongest to weakest is, the order of overall power is mostly Alpha. speculation. Alpha's definitely the strongest and Gamma the weakest, but when you get to the middle ranks at 3, 4, and 5, it's kind of it ambiguous. Really is hard like... to say who might be stronger. Epsilon! Epsilon is! Since we're gonna talk about each of them anyway, though. Okay, what is this, though? Because this is season 1 opening. We never, ever saw their outfits like this. So I was confused by the end of season one. It's like, we never saw the white and red outfits. What the fuck? Here's the order. Where is this? What is this? That I think they're in. First is obviously Alpha. Shadow's second in command and overseer of all Shadow Garden operations. With an abundance of magic that surpasses even Sid's, Alpha's- What? It, yeah, OP is just tricking us, right? It, it, it is baiting us, but Alpha surpasses Sid in magic. This is said by Sid himself. Here of all Shadow Garden operations. 
with an abundance of magic that surpasses even Sid's. Wow. Alpha's innate strength combined with high intelligence and development wow. technique places her at the top of Shadow Garden behind only Shadow. Not a single member compares when it comes to skills, strength, and swordsmanship. Well, if we're talking about brute strength, I think that like maybe Delta, just because, you know, the nature of like a beast girl, you'd think that she could like be toe-to-toe -to -toe in brute force strength, but Alpha's probably more well-rounded. So much so that no one even dares to challenge her anymore. When it comes to raw destructive Baldi. And physical strength, Baldi. there's no one that does it quite Delta. like Delta does. Yeah. She's the second strongest overall, but in terms of pure physicality... <laughs> oh my god. This episode's camera angles for Delta was insane, bro. Overall, but in... Even Baldi was looking a little thick, right? His curves and his tight suit. <laughs> Look at this right here, bro. That's his ass. Do you see this ass right here? Do you see his ass right here? What is he doing? In terms of oh my god, cameraman. Not only do I see two cheeks, I see two titties. What the fuck? Oh! Back that- oh! 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 Even Alpha doesn't compare. I mean, Sid himself has said that she's the physically strongest of the seven shots. Jesus Christ. That was a thumbnail I used. I think everybody used that as a thumbnail. Baldi did indeed go scuba diving. She- look at those abs! So, with her beastkin traits providing superhuman strength, speed, and senses, it's that combined with the training she did with Shadow that makes her one of the most effective killing machines in all of Shadow Garden. Also the most brutal since she tests out the ability of self-control. Now- Wait, I, I missed that. What did she say? What did she say? Is, it's that combined with the training she did with Shadow that okay. makes her one of the most effective killing machines in all of Shadow Garden. And then? Also the most brutal since she tends to lack the ability of self-control. Oh, okay, she just has no control. She just goes berserk. Now, since there's not much else dealt Bankai. with other than strength, it's Bankai! serves as Shadow Garden's go-to combatant. The number one pick when they need someone to, let's just say, send a message. Fuck shit up. Yep. Next, we have the sixth member, Zeta, who, while not so much mentioned in the anime or the novels yet, is known to be one of the most talented members of Shadow Garden. How so? It's too soon to say whether she's a fair rival. Again, where's the nipples? To Delta or even Alpha, but apparently she's good at whatever she does and... <laughs> what does she do, though? Whatever she does, <laughs> she's talented in whatever she does. What is she doing? She's just like researching penguins right now. And also one of the best at controlling her magic. Okay. Beta Good control of magic. After her and while being proficient in mostly everything. I think Beta is more of like a logistics person, more like managing team leader, like manager, like right. Like if I were to think who would be leader right after Alpha, I would assume it's Beta. Maybe it's because the last episode, Beta did assume the role of leadership, right? But... I think Beta's more suited for these managerial, more team leading, more macro management stuff. It's her ability to gather information and analyze it that makes her so good yeah. at supporting. She doesn't quite specialize in anything the way that all the other members do, but... She specializes in fanfic. Yaoi fanfic. When it comes to filling in like a League of Legends flex... I did not know she used a bow though. And that's the thing with the mobile games. They show me the different weapon types all these different shades use. Like the fact that Epsilon uses a... Uh, what's it called? A site that was like... What? player, she's more than capable of fitting any role that's given to her. She can lead, just not as good as Alpha, fight, though not as strong as Delta, All -rounder. strategize, but not at the same level as Gamma, then infiltrate, but just not as skillful as the way that Epsilon does. Epsilon, master infiltrator. She can infiltrate me all she wants, but Beta is pretty much like jack-of-all-trades, all-rounder, um, but probably would be next in line to Alpha in terms of who would assume leadership, even though Delta is purely stronger. Obviously, Delta can't be a leader, right? Shit would go crazy. We need, like, more people that's a little bit more, um, has a routine. So, by becoming skilled at pretty much everything, Beta has a good sense on how to use those skills to support in the best way possible. She may never be the best at one specific Jesus. thing, but Jesus, rest cameraman. assured her position is just as crucial as all the others. Especially since her Natsume identity gets her into networks that no one else may be True, to. true. Next, we have Epsilon and- MY Bush FAVORITE GIRL! This is it! Epsilon is the one. She is at a close fifth with Beta. Her single spe Close fifth! Specialization in espionage makes her- That's fine. Because our girl isn't really purely about fighting. She does espionage. She's a secret spy! They're not quite as strong as Beta. She does control her magic the best out of anyone, but- That's right. Wait, I thought we just said that... The penguin girl, the girl that was watching the penguin was the best at- Hold up, did he just contradict himself? And news? And he, I, I swear to God, you just said that the dog girl, right? I swear to God, the dog girl, the right? Thing, mostly look, logic. 
look, look, apparently look. Apparently she's good at whatever she does and also- Apparently she's good at whatever she does not very specific. One of the best at controlling her magic. One of the best. Not the best, one of the best. Epsilon is the best. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you for glazing my waifu up any news. She does control her magic the best out of anyone. But and she needs to, because she needs to surpass her genetics. She needs to surpass her limitations. How does she limit break? How does she surpass her own shortcomings? By just patting these up. And nobody sees them when they drop. Nope. But just because she can bake her body figure for years on end. Oh. Doesn't mean oh. she can cast snips just like how Sid does. Instead, it just means she can do things like cure demonic possession. Making her the only one alongside Alpha capable of doing so. She can do that? Oh. We remember when Alpha, like, used the fucking Excalibur move onto that homunculi monster thing in, like, episode 5 and freed the girl that Iris is fighting? So Epsilon can kind of do the same thing. My god, what, what is she doing with the fingers right there? It's, like, pointing to her titties right there. The most recent High School DXD episode did say, Azazel told Issei, a nipple is a doorbell. Don't tap it. Push it. So, despite mainly being used for infiltration missions now, back when Shadow Garden was just getting started, her role in building the organization definitely made her one of the more essential members. Nice, nice, Even essential, essential member. Epsilon deserves more credit. Shadow that we don't see very often, but yeah. as the most intelligent out of all of them, she's the one spearheading the R&D department. By using the wisdom Shadow had given to her, Ida can reverse engineer pretty much anything. Like, we already know that she's working on the steam engine, but prior to that- I did not know she was working on the steam engine, but sure, uh, it's probably- Well, that's probably like exposition shit. You know when em Eminence and Shadow does like really important plot exposition? There's a shitload of fan service that happens. I can't focus on the plot, man. She reinvented the camera, constructed the very foundations the Mitsugoshi company is built off of, and oh. even served as the architect for Shadow Garden's core bases of operation. Damn. The reason she ranks so low in terms of strength is because asleep- I don't, th I don't think she's really meant for fighting. Like, this is a girl that heavily specializes in, like, all the stuff that the other girls can't do, which is research and development. Disorder often prevents her from performing well. Oh, it's not like too. she's not skilled or can't hold her own. She it's can just fight. This lack of sleep makes doing so difficult. Gotcha. She'll often doze off even when she's walking and act lethargic pretty much everywhere. If you're wondering how Gamma can possibly be weaker than someone who's never awake, Gamma is actually really strong because in the mobile game, the interesting thing about Gamma, you know how the running gag of Gamma is that she is really bad at hand-eye coordination, so she trips, and as soon as she trips, her ass is just up in the air for us to see. In the mobile game, this is used as a really interesting way to fight because no one can predict her. She just trips and like accidentally stabs an enemy, and they're like, what the fuck? And then Beta says something like, oh, how could you understand what she's going to do if she herself doesn't understand, right? It's like, what? Well, that's because she has literally- Here it comes! Oh! You see, much like- Didn't show us the booty, but thank you for the Delta booty again. Like how Delta's lack of intelligence makes her fighting style predictable, Gamma's lack of intuition makes hers inept. <laughs> I mean, at least Delta has the instincts to back up her simple-minded strength, but when it comes to Gamma, no amount of strength will make her non-existent instincts useful on the battlefield. No, it's As unpredictable! Sid once put it, Intuition is wasted on an idiot, and intelligence means nothing without intuition. Intuition is wasted on an idiot. Huh. One more time, one more time. Intuition is wasted on an idiot, and intelligence means nothing without intuition. And she is the latter. Maybe I'm the former. So, while Delta and Gamma are rather similar, it's Gamma's lack of intuition that makes her so much weaker than everyone else. But it doesn't matter, because her point is to just raise funds and just, like, fund the shit out of this entire project. Without Gamma, nothing can happen. Where she makes up for it instead is with a Money. Oh. mindset. <laughs> this is like a triple threat right here. This is a triple threat because, okay, triple threat implies three things, right? In basketball, the triple threat position is a stance such that at any moment, you could pass the ball, you can dribble, or you can shoot all in one position. The triple threat in this context is the armpits, the side boob, but also the main cleavage. That unparalleled by- My bad! There was a fourth! I was ignorant. If you look closely enough, you can see your belly button aligning too. You can, you can see, if you look close enough here, there is this outlining of the belly button. 
There was a hidden fourth I didn't see. Any other. You see, as a person who- FUCK! A fifth one. This area where it's all darkened out, I'm sure you guys can understand what this is alluding to with their fat thighs. Whose intellect rivals even Ida's, Gemma has often taken the role of strategist. She'll serve as Shadow Garden's rear commander and use her tactical insights to coordinate operations. She could probably do something similar to Beta too in terms of leadership. A surprising skill considering she has no combat experience herself. <laughs> there it but is, the classic yeah, fallen that's ass. A brief overview of the Seven Shadows. Where that brings us to now is the numbers below them who have all joined after. The named and unnamed. So, while normally each number is simply the order in which that person had joined Shadow Garden, there's actually an elite group between 8 and 25 known as uh, the named 8 members. and 25, okay. The strongest members that aren't already part of the Seven Shadows. As the finest non-OGs in all of Shadow Garden, these are the organization's upper echelon and... I, these are all the characters I have no idea about, because it's like, whenever you see girls with their hoods down, you know they're important, but at the same time, if you don't recognize them, they're not the main shades. I just never understood who they were. I just knew... I, I know these two show up a lot. These two show up a lot. They don't say shit. Like, for example, when we were making mundane man's mask shit, they were on the bike, like, powering up the electricity. They were also on the kayak, you know, when they were... Epsilon was doing, like, more espionage shit, and they were... It seems like these two... This is Kai and Omega. Is, is it just me, or does Kai and Omega... Um... Just serve Epsilon specifically. In all of Shadow Garden, these are the organization's upper echelon and commander. Serve as the Sar drill sergeant. The shadows. So whether it be as an advisor, Nui. confidant, or interim commander, these specialized numbers are all given names to recognize. That's the burger wrapper, guys. This is the burger wrapper. The burger wrapper that she's just cutting up real quick. No, no, no. I'm not sure. Maybe she. I, no, no. I think this not burger wrapper. Yeah, I think she's cutting up Oriana's clothing. Is their ranks. Thus the reason they're known as the named numbers. We only know a few of them now, but of the ones that we do, there's new Lambda, mm. Kai, and Omega. Yeah, and then... Does Nami count as one, or is she below that? Because she was named, and I thought, basically, named and unnamed... Um, uh, named and unnamed was literally the difference of half they mentioned their names yet in the show. All members who have shown exceptional skill as well as done much to contribute to Shadow Garden. As for the way this prestigious rank is gained, well, aside from being outright given for demonstrating Roku, Roku, Roku. prowess, a number can earn one by- I want Anarosta to join. I want Anarosta to join, man. By challenging and defeating a named number. The exact process behind this- Fucking Goldie. Known, but Dude, I- if you look at my old Eminence and Shadow reactions to the tournament arc, fucking Goldie? The exact- He had a fucking carriage for his sword. This dude, like, it's like he's like at an airport and he's on a cart. He fucking pushes the cart with the sword. It's insane. The process behind this isn't entirely known. What a godlike character. I actually love Goldie a lot. I actually like Goldie a lot. And Quentin, I was shitting on Quentin in season one because he was looking down on Monday, man. Quentin and Goldie combo, I hope they show up more often in the future seasons or future episodes because they resemble, they are pretty much what Stella and Poe are, right? It's just time skip versions. Known, but a lot of speculation suggests that there is at least one rule that needs to be followed. What? If a triple digit wants to challenge a named number, Four twenty. must first earn the right by defeating a double digit. You want to become a named number. You got to defeat. So if you're three digits, obviously you're lower in the rankings. So you got to defeat a higher ranking member, specifically in the two. <laughs> nice choice of numbers here, Annie News. Perfect numbers. So, say someone like Rose wants to become a named number, uh. in order to even have the ability to challenge one, she must first defeat a double digit to prove herself. Can she challenge her master sar- uh, sorry, uh, sorry, not master sergeant Tobichi Origami, but her drill sergeant? Is drill sergeant, uh... She is a named number, right? Yeah, so if she defeats a drill sergeant, then she could get closer to Shadow's side. But then she would lose her title of Roku Roku Roku, and then I can't just say 666 anymore during the reactions. Supposedly, Lambda. that's the way that Kai and Nui had gained their ranks. Who did Kai, who did Kai, Nui, and who did they defeat? Once again, this is just speculation, but the challenge system does in fact exist, and it's... Yeah, Lambda pretty much trains Oriana, right? It's gonna be pretty hard, but Oriana's like, pretty important, right? She got the powers given directly from Shadow, then again, so did every other girl, but, you know. The only way to gain a name aside from being acknowledged by the Seven. As for everyone else... Wait, wait, what? You got a duel, or... The only way to gain a name aside from being acknowledged by the Seven. You can just be acknowledged by one of the Seven. 
So you can just skip the entire dual system. Fuck it. Why bother? Also, wouldn't it be cheap? Think about this. If the rules are such that if you're a triple digit ranking member, all you have to defeat is a two digit number, then you would just challenge number 99 because intuitively number 99 is probably going to be the weakest double digit number. And as soon as you beat that, you somehow become a name number in 8 to 25? I'm not really sure how that works. As for everyone else, there is no rank from 25 to 666. Mm. Only the number representing the order in which you join Shadow Garden. All the unnamed. That's not to say there isn't some form of hierarchy, because when it comes to authority, a lower number can usually give orders to a higher number. Oh. There also tends to be a power disparity between every set of 100. So even though the numbers aren't meant to be an indicator of power, Every 100 increments, like the 600s, the 500s, and the 400s, there's a little bit of like a power gap, right? Like a, a difference in power. Power. It is fair to make the assumption that those in the 100 to 200 range mm. are relatively stronger, stronger than those in the 200 obviously. to 300 range. Now that means that Roku Roku Roku, our girl Oriana, is the weakest. Shit. Now. Well, we don't know that, but could be. Though every number receives the same regiment of training now. The role they take up in Shadow Garden is likely dependent on what they specialize in. They would probably be grouped based on their strengths and formed into a unit under a named number that could use them. That named number would then take orders from a shade, and that shade would get their orders from Alpha. That's the general structure in which Shadow Garden operates by. Basically, Alpha's like, Yo, have you ever guys watched the South Park episode about pimps and hoes? And there's a specific terminology, you know, part of my language, but I think it's called like the main bitch, right? The pimp has like a main bitch. The main bitch is basically the one that like rules over all the lower bitches, right? So alpha is like the main bitch, and then everyone else is like the, the lower rankings. <laughs> That's what basically this organization is. Alpha's orders are typically the utmost authority, but if Shadow was to ever step in and contradict her, his word would always override hers. I don't think he ever would. He doesn't give a fuck, right? He's the absolute ruler whose command is everything. He may not know the true extent of his organization, but the missions he carries out are followed through with the utmost resolve by everyone. But yeah, that's pretty much what we know about. And this chibi version, the, the Shadow Garden chibi version, I think we might watch those on streams one day, maybe. About Shadow Garden so far. If you found this lore video to be entertaining, then yes. feel free to leave a like and let me know in the comments. Absolutely. Great video as usual from Annie News. Please go subscribe to his channel and like his video if you enjoyed this video. And by the way, we do these reactions live every morning, 7 a.m. PST. So come out to these streams. I hope to see you there.